Why do we use radiation therapy for cancer? Well, there's three major modalities used to treat cancer. One is surgery, one is chemotherapy, and the third is radiation. Um, so radiation is used for several reasons. Oftentimes we'll use it if the surgeon is unable to get all of the disease out. If the surgeon operates on a tumor and he knows that there's disease left behind or there's concern about the margins, we'll give radiation to essentially clean up the margins and give the best uh, chance for local control of that tumor. Um, sometimes we'll use radiation as definitive therapy, meaning that a patient is not going to have surgery, such as prostate cancer. We'll use radiation with the intent of curing that patient with no other therapy. Sometimes we'll use radiation in conjunction with chemotherapy, such as our head and neck cancer patients, where the radiation is designed to treat the tumor and the lymph nodes, and we give chemotherapy in conjunction with the radiation to make the radiation more effective. So there's multiple indications for radiation, which we tailor on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. How does radiation therapy work? So radiation works by delivering very precise high doses of radiation or energy um, to a target such as the tumor. And it works um, on the cellular level, meaning the level of the cells of the cancer, uh, by damaging the DNA and it prevents it from dividing. So it kills off the cancer cells, prevents it from dividing, prevents it from spreading. How is radiation given? So there's two major ways that we give radiation. Um, the first is with what's called external beam radiation. That's radiation that's delivered by large machines called linear accelerators. And the linear accelerators are aimed um, by the radiation oncologist at a tumor. And the beam comes in at multiple different angles and treats that tumor. The other major way that we give radiation is with something called brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is the Greek word for short distance. And it's how we surgically implant radioactive sources into a tumor. Um, we frequently use this when we treat certain diseases of uh, the gynecologic um, etiology, such as cervix cancer or endometrial cancer, where we'll temporarily put in radioactive sources into the cervix or into the vagina. And it's designed to give very high doses of radiation to the tumor, but limit radiation to the normal surrounding anatomy. How long does the radiation treatment take? That's a good question. I get asked that question all the time. So. The way that radiation or the length of radiation, um, again, depends in some regards on the treatment. But as a general rule, radiation typically takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes a day. Um, it's given every day, Monday through Friday, not weekends. Um, and treatment takes anywhere from two to five weeks or two to seven weeks, depending on the type of tumor that we're treating. Does it damage normal tissue? Well, radiation can potentially damage normal tissue, but one of the advantages of doing external beam radiation with computer planning with a board-certified radiation oncologist is that we're trained to design a treatment plan to deliver the radiation to the tumor, but limit radiation to the normal surrounding anatomy. So the whole theory behind giving radiation for cancer is to give very high doses of radiation to the tumor, limit radiation to the normal anatomy, and reduce the risk of side effects. So even though there might be some damage to the normal anatomy, it's very low with proper planning. What are the side effects of radiation therapy? Yeah, there are side effects, and it's um, very much dependent on what we're treating. So for example, um, if we're treating a skin tumor, or sometimes when we're treating breast cancer, the skin will get a little bit red. Um, one, of the more common one of the more common side effects of radiation is fatigue. And the analogy that I always use is like when you go to the beach. You know, if you're laying out in the sun, you don't do anything. That night when you come home, you're more run down. Radiation kind of works the same way. Um, sometimes when we treat pelvic tumors, you may get a little bit of diarrhea. Um, when we treat some tumors in the chest, you may get some discomfort when you swallow because the esophagus, the esophagus gets irritated. So it's very much case by case depending on where in the body we're radiating. I heard you had about CyberKnife on the radio. What is CyberKnife? That's a great question. Um, CyberKnife, in my opinion, is the greatest breakthrough to happen in, in radiation oncology in the last 10 years since I've been practicing. What CyberKnife is, is it's a regular radiation machine that's been miniaturized and placed on a robotic arm. So the advantage of CyberKnife in contrast to other forms of radiation that we use is that it's intelligent, meaning that as a patient moves and breathes and as a tumor moves, the CyberKnife is the only system out there that is able to essentially see the tumor and move with it. So the advantage of that is that it's accurate to less than a millimeter, which is the diameter of a piece of hair. So we're able to give very, very high doses of radiation to a tumor, yet limit radiation to the normal surrounding anatomy. Now, I always tell my patients that to oversimplify what I do for a living, it's marksmanship. If I could give every patient a trillion units of radiation but keep the normal surrounding anatomy to zero, 
I'd be able to cure every patient. In practicality, you can't do that. But the Cyber Knife, much more so than the other treatments that are out there, enables us to move along that extreme. And it can do that for two reasons. Number one, it's intelligent, meaning that it can see a tumor much better than a human being can. And number two, it's on a robotic arm. So the precision of the cyber knife is much more so than the precision of a, phys uh, the precision of a physician's arm. So it's been an absolute godsend for our patients. Aside from precision, what are the other benefits of using cyber knife? Well, a major benefit in contrast to surgery is that it's obviously incisionless and bloodless. Um, from a patient convenience point of view, it is much more convenient, meaning that treatments are five days or less in, comp uh, in comparison to other forms of radiation, which can be upwards of eight or nine weeks. Treatment typically takes 30 to 40 minutes per day, so it's just a small part of the day, and then you're done in a week or less. Um, I have a nice story of a patient of mine who um, really didn't want to upset his family, and they didn't know that he had cancer, so he would come in very early in the morning, get his treatment, go to work, came home at a normal time and was done in a week, and he's doing great, and his family never knew that he even had the cancer treatment. How do you decide when to use CyberKnife? Well, anytime we give radiation at Winthrop, it's specific to that uh, individual patient. Um, some patients require conventional radiation, so a patient may have a lung tumor, for example, that spread to the lymph nodes, and in that case, CyberKnife can actually be too precise, meaning that we don't want to treat just the tumor, but we want to treat the lymph nodes in that area. Whereas um, a patient may have a very small lung tumor where the lymph nodes are not involved, and that patient would be a perfect candidate for cyber where we want to be very precise to give high doses of radiation to just the tumor, and we're not worried about the regional lymph nodes. So it's really case by case, depending on the patient. But the nice thing about practicing where we are at Winthrop is that we have the advantage of using conventional radiation, 3D conformal radiation, um, or CyberKnife. What types of cancers can be treated with CyberKnife? Well, that's a question that I frequently get asked, but there are several common conditions that we use CyberKnife for. Uh, one of the biggest indications for CyberKnife in our practice is prostate cancer, and we are actually the second largest site in the world for treating prostate cancer patients with CyberKnife. Um, CyberKnife is commonly used for brain tumors, it's used for spine tumors, it's used for lung tumors. CyberKnife is actually designed by a neurosurgeon um, to give very high doses of radiation for brain tumors. So again, Prostate cancer is common, brain tumors are common, spine tumors are common. We use it for early stage lung cancers. We can use it for liver metastases or small spots of cancer that have gone to the liver. We can use it for unresectable pancreatic tumors. There's multiple indications for CyberKnife and we do it on a case by case basis. So we've also just started a very exciting trial for CyberKnife for breast cancer. We are one of the few centers in the world um, that's now experienced in treating uh, breast cancer tumors with CyberKnife. We use it for certain benign conditions such as trigeminal neuralgia. When I was in medical school, you would read about trigeminal neuralgia, which is a condition where patients just have this chronic intractable pain in their face. And um, I thought it was the type of thing that you just read about and never saw in clinical practice, but we have world experts in our neurosurgical department that attract patients for CyberKnife um, for relief. And we've treated many, many patients with trigeminal neuralgia. Um, and for me as a physician, to see a patient that's suffering in pain and the pain just almost like as if you're turning a switch goes away, it's really gratifying. Is CyberKnife experimental? Uh, that's a question that sometimes people ask me when they're not familiar with CyberKnife. And there's absolutely nothing experimental about CyberKnife. It was approved by the FDA. Um, and the approval states that it's indicated to give radiation anywhere in the body that radiation is indicated. Um, there have been numerous studies on prostate cancer, on brain tumors, on spine tumors, on lung tumors, where it is now a standard of care treatment. It's covered by most insurance companies. It's covered by Medicare. There's absolutely nothing experimental about CyberKnife. How is treating prostate cancer with CyberKnife different than treating it with other forms of radiation? That's an interesting question, and I have this model here to explain some of the differences. This is a model of the prostate, and this is the prostate right here. Normal anatomy that sits around the prostate are the bladder right here, the urethra, that's a tube that drains the bladder that goes out through the penis, and the rectum, which sits where my finger is. Our regular radiation machines can compensate for the movement of the prostate, meaning that as a patient breathes and moves, the prostate's going to move. So in order to compensate for that uncertainty of movement, we have to put about a 20 millimeter margin of normal tissue around the prostate. So as the prostate moves, it doesn't move out of the radiation beam. As a result, we have to radiate a little bit more of the bladder, which is right here, a little bit more of the rectum, which is where my finger is, and we have to give the radiation much slower over nine weeks. 
The CyberKnife system can actually track the movement of the prostate. Instead of putting a 20 millimeter margin around the prostate, we put a 3 millimeter margin around the prostate. So we're now radiating less of the bladder, less of the rectum, and we can give the radiation much faster. We do it in five days. What is the success rate for treating prostate cancer with CyberKnife? That's probably the most common question that I get asked during my practice, seeing as many prostate cancer patients that we see at Winthrop. Um, there's two ways to look at success. The first way that we define success is what is the patient's survival? What's the chance of the patient being alive? And that number is going to be very close to 100%. The more accurate way to ask the question is what's the chance of the patient being alive with a normal PSA, what we call their biochemical survival? And there's now peer-reviewed data that's gone through vigorous vetting processes um, that shows that the five-year success rate for CyberNet is 93%, which compares favorably or better to the other treatments that are available. How can I get more information about CyberKnife? Well, you can ask your physician. Um, two other easy ways to find out about CyberKnife are to look at the Winthrop website, www.winthrop.org, or you can call directly 1-866-WINTHROP. It's a great way to get started.